What's going on guys? This is Kaishiro. Welcome back. So for our video today, we're going to cover top 5 rogue decks of July 2023 OCG format. So these are the decks that I can recommend you if you are trying to be low-key and not too mainstream while competing on the current format on this post-July banlist era. So without further ado, let's get started. Coming at number 5, we have Rika. So this deck has been under the radar for uh, quite a long time, no? Uh... This deck has, hasn't seen some uh, relevant and numerous stops after the Pote with their new support from uh, Power of the Elements way back last year, 2022. And I can really tell that this deck is a really good deck that can catch people off guard. If your opponent doesn't know what to do when playing against Riga, uh, I can guarantee you that they will suffer and have a uh, terrorizing experience with the Srika archetype and the most notable thing about Rika right now is their Rika Con Con their field spell uh, their field spell allows you to tribute summon tribute the cards of your opponent for cost so imagine tributing all of their cards with zero cost and with advantages to you it's a very cancerous uh, and toxic interaction from Rika and it's really frustrating to deal against with that because I have faced many Rika players all throughout on our locals and I can really tell that it's not fun to play against that uh, kind of thing. And it is also a good deck that can really make a decent board with some negates and interruptions. So uh, the turn 1 of this deck is really nice as well. The problem of Rika is uh, cards like DD Crow that can... Uh, what they call this? Uh, instigate their cards on the graveyard. Because they are, uh, as a Rika player, you want your cards on the graveyard because you need your cards on the graveyard to do something with this deck to negate your opponent and interrupt them. So DD Crow can uh, shut down those uh, shenanigans on the Rika. And then Ghost Bell because uh, most of the time you have to move cards out of your graveyard using this Rika. So Ghost Bell proves to be very effective against that. And cards like Cosmic Cyclone because you want to get your field spell on your field as much as possible to. Uh, maximize your advantages using this Rika strategy so Cosmic Cyclone is a bad card to deal against because it can out your field spell but nonetheless this is a very strong rogue deck right now for me on my books and a quite underrated one uh, except for the TCG of course because Rika won the EUWCQ on TCG but on OCG it is under the radar and it will really catch people off guard so at number 5 we have Rika so moving on, at number 4 on this list, we have Naturia Runic. So this is what people call the healthier version of Runic. So this is uh, quite shy away from the usual build of Runic with stun, floodgates, and stalling cards using the uh, floodgate lineup of Runic and draw power uh, in replacement of uh, Naturia engine that can make the deck more explosive and that can make uh, combo plays on this runic archetype so this is what they call a healthier version of runic because it is uh, interactable and i can really tell that because this deck has a lot of interactions and it is very fun to play and the most notable thing on naturia runic is they can single-handedly stop the rune uh, purely because it is one of the most relevant meta decks right now on the format and it is uh, based around spell cards that's why uh it is a struggle when facing against Naturia Runic because this this deck can bring out Naturia Beast easily and Naturia Beast is really good against spell based decks like Purely and cards like Evenly Match as well can suffer your experience using the Naturia Runic because you want to get your cards on the field like the Runic Fountain and your back row set up with the Naturia Trap and other cards on the field. So evenly much can devastate your board on this deck. And yeah, I think that this deck can really uh, answer a lot of meta relevant decks right now in the format. Like purely and it is very fun to play. That's why I recommend this deck as a very good rogue deck right now in the format. Because of those factors alone. So at number 4 we have uh, Runic Ashuria. Moving on at number 3 on this list. We have Performable Draco Slayer. So this deck is a uh, most recently buffed deck right now in the format due to the 
release on the jail of performable monkey board from the previous banish so this deck got an addition and a really good one on that regard because uh, adding performable monkey board on this deck makes the deck uh, have more ceiling and resiliency uh, imagine having monkey board and uh, electromite on the side of the field it is a very antagonizing uh, side to behold and it is a really good one to that uh, extent because this is a very good combo deck right now in the format it can really uh, set up some notable boss monsters on the field like Apulusa and then Boreload Savage and then Barone so this can bring out all of the negation monsters on the field and win the game from there if they are not interrupted and they can also bring out Abyss Dweller that can shut down Graveyard Reliant decks like Adamancipator on the format and then Tier Lament so you can have countermeasures ag as well against uh, Graveyard decks and the thing that you should worry when you're playing performable Draco Slayer are the cards like Droll and Lockbird that may skip your turn and then cards like Maxi of course because you tend to summon almost half your of your deck to be honest or more than half of your deck on a single turn that's uh, Maxi is very punishing against performable Draco Slayer and cards like uh, Dimensional Barrier of course because you are uh, potent on Pendulum Summoning so you can get shackled by this type of card so at number 3 we have Performable Draco Slayer moving forward at number 2 we have Matmek so how, how the mighty have fallen no? uh, Matmek has been a very, very good deck on the previous format uh, around top 2 to 3 or 4 best deck on that format uh, it even came to the point that Matmek is the most anticipated deck on the format with the release of Link Decoder so Matmek uh, had its time on the previous format but right now I just consider it a very good rogue deck because they lost so much uh, consistency with the uh, losing of two copies of Matmek Circular uh, this deck uh, got a little bit power creep on that uh, note and the problem of this deck is uh, it is a very prone to hand trap deck like uh, Imperm and Veiler on that regard and then Ash Blossom as well can be very punishing against this deck so this deck has a very few, few play arounds on many hand traps right now in the format because they lost their most uh, and best use card on the deck but uh, the good thing on this deck is they can have a good turn one they can uh, bring out the fluid dragon and then have many negates on their board and super factorial as well is a very good card it is like an upgrade, upgraded version of Tri Brigade Revolt. And then they have a very good going second as well because they can bring out access code with update jammer that can really OTK and swing games from there. So this is still a very good rogue deck on my books. And you should definitely try it if you are looking for a deck that has a linear playstyle and very effective as well. So at number two, <coughs> moving on at number one we have adventurer tier lamens so this is the uh, most uh, and latest innovation on this uh, tier lamens saga so tier lamens has been around for uh, quite a year no or half one year and a half on that uh, regard so tier lamens has been around for that a very long time but players now innovated adventurer on th onto the tier lamens uh, strategy because it gives so much value if you have milled your uh, commander before uh, water enchantress now uh, and then Aramisir so you can get so much value from those uh, milling factors and you can synchro play using the token the adventure token and your revo synchron and your cards that can make ancient fairy dragon that gives your field spell of the elements and you have a lot of place to on your cards to be honest when you are playing adventure and the elements combined and the most notable thing on this deck is they can make a really powerful board with the Hot Red Archfiend Dragon Abyss and Predator Pantra Gastapelia and then Winda and sometimes Rulkalos and uh, Kalaid Heart. So yeah, this deck can really uh, out-tempo a lot of decks when going first. But the problem of this deck is uh, cards like, our cards like uh, Forbidden Droplet because this deck uh, rely on Fusion summoning and synchro summoning uh, powerful boss monsters on their field 
So, uh, Droplet can really shut down their board uh, monsters. And then cards like uh, Bestial Magnum Druid Swarm, those Bestial cards that can banish the fusion enablers of the elements on the graveyard, uh, it can be very suffocating against uh, tier elements monsters. And cards like Lightning Storm that can wipe your back row lineup of uh, adventurer cards on your disposal, like the Dracobuck that is very good as well on outing floodgates and floodgate monsters on the format like Baguska and Arise Heart. So yeah, at number 1 we have Adventure Tailaments. So short recap, uh, at number 5 we have Rika, at number 2 we have uh, Runic Naturia, at number 3 we have Performable Draco Slayer, at number 2 we have Matmek, at number 1 we have Adventure Tailaments. So that sums up our video for today guys, thank you for watching. Hit the subscription button if you're not yet subscribed on my YouTube channel. And hit the like button if you like this kind of content. And hit the notification bell if you want to get updated on my fu uh, future videos. So thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.